So, so where are you in this process of developing a vaccine for coronavirus? Yeah, so thanks. We, we've moved very, very quickly at uh, CureVac to, to make a virus uh, or to make a vaccine for the coronavirus. It's exciting times. Um, as you may know, our technology is uh, very, very fast. We utilize messenger RNA, which means that we are actually going to encode the virus or the contagious part of the virus on messenger RNA. Then we would inject it into the body and we are actually able to then create a vaccine for, um, for people. So very exciting times. We're in early days. Um, but moving quickly. What does that mean? How, how much longer before this becomes something that people can use? Yeah, so we expect we'll be in phase one clinical trials probably early summertime. Um, so I think we're moving quickly. You know, we got the sequence back just uh, in early January or mid-January when it was first released. We've actually gone ahead and sequenced the, the virus and, and made, or the vaccine and put together uh, a nice uh, construct, and are several constructs, and we're driving them forward in some early testing, as I say, most likely early summer to be in the clinic. I mean, it sounds very fast. How is it different from some of the other vaccines in the works that, that Meg just laid out, the Moderna one, the, the J&J &J one? Is this all going to happen at the same time? Yeah, hard to say. Um, I don't know some of the other technologies that, for instance, J&J &J is using. Um, we use messenger RNA, so does Moderna. Uh, our technologies are not exactly the same, but I think that there's a, a strong view that messenger RNA will be one of the vaccine technologies to most likely be the winner here in terms of getting something into the clinic very, very quickly. And when I say the winner, what I mean here is the, the opportunity to protect people from the coronavirus. I think that's really the key piece here. Yeah, I mean, in terms of uh, the race to, to beat this particular strain, uh, the CDC director did give an interview to CNN where he said that the virus, quote, is probably with us beyond this season, beyond this year. You'd go along with that? I'd go along with that, and I think that's why we want to work so closely with CEPI, as Meg mentioned. You know, we have an $8 million grant from them to work on this uh, vaccine. We also are in a position where we have production, so once we get the vaccine into phase one, we can work with the, the health authorities, we can work with the regulatory agencies, we can manufacture it, and then it's a question simply of, you know, how do we work with the uh, regulatory authorities to bring this vaccine forward as quickly as possible. So, I mean, Dan, we, we get flu shots and yet often still get the flu because of different strains. Would it be something like that? So, really interesting question. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so, you know, with, with flu, you, you make the vaccine in eggs and it takes a very long time. And as you know, the flu strain can mutate. So, it's not necessarily 100% that we've gotten the exact uh, mutation that we need here. Hence, why you might get the flu shot and, you know, you still may get the flu. With messenger RNA, what's really interesting is we can exactly mimic the antigen. And so we believe that because messenger RNA acts as a data carrier to tell your body exactly what to manufacture in terms of the protein, we're then actually activating your immune system, your T cells, your B cells, we're creating antibodies. So the probability that we make a vaccine that is very, very close to the antigen and is protective and highly protective at a, a very high level is very, very strong. If you were, as I'm sure so many hope, able to get to the point where you had a vaccine that you think proved effective, uh, would you have the capacity to actually manufacture it in uh, the amounts that might be required? So, great question. You know, right now we don't know what the size of the dose is going to be. Um, for instance, our rabies vaccine that we just finished, phase one, is one microgram. So should we be so fortunate to have such a low dose, then I think we would be in a position to manufacture millions and millions of doses. If it's a much higher dose, then, you know, we're going to be in a situation where we can manufacture fewer, but perhaps we could partner with, you know, a large company or something like that to work on and, and expand our manufacturing to where we could supply a significant portion of the market. You know, the change in the methodology in China this week had some complaining that drug testing gets a lot of uh, love, get a lot of money, but diagnostics do not. I wonder how you're feeling right now about our ability to even diagnose. Yeah, I'm not so close to the diagnosing piece, so it would be hard for me to really comment on that. The, the piece that we're the closest to is the vaccine, um, knowing how to make a vaccine, how to make it at a low dose, to make it effective and to move very quickly with our technology. And as I say, this fact that we have the manufacturing that we can manufacture 
and get this into phase one quickly. And if we can show some success in phase one, then I think we can work very closely with the regulatory authorities to see how quickly can we bring this to market so that we can start protecting people. Dan, is there anything else you've learned in the development of the vaccine about the virus itself, just how contagious it is, how it's spread beyond, beyond what, we've, what we're hearing from authorities? You know, we, we haven't learned much more. I think the authorities have done a nice job of, of telling, talking to us about, you know, how it spreads and, and you know, how quickly they, they believe it will spread. You know, at CureVac, we had worked on the SARS vaccine um, at one point, so we're very familiar with the coronavirus. Um, right now, what we will be making is what we call a monovalent virus, so something specific to this coronavirus. But because our technology is unique and we can actually make cocktails of antigens, so we could make a vaccine with what we would call multivalent, so having multiple different antigens in there, we could potentially, down the road, after we get this monovalent vaccine made for coronavirus, make something that would be uh, protected for the Wuhan virus, maybe also MERS and SARS. So, you know, we were really hoping that this is, you know, the start of an opportunity to be very protective around the coronavirus for people uh, going forward for, you know, many years to come.